Do you know how to analyze continuous beams? Continuous beams are indeterminate structures. They cannot be solved using three equilibrium equations. We need special methods to solve them. In today's tutorial, I will go through a practical example of continuous beams using moment distribution method. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about stiffness method and rigidly jointed structures or indeterminate structures. And the method that we are talking about today is moment distribution method. In this figure, we have a continuous beam which is simply supported at b c and d and it is built in at a now clearly looking at this structure it is statically indeterminate structure and i cannot solve it without using the methods for statically indeterminate structures the flexural rigidity of each span is shown for loading indicated a is using the method of moment distribution to calculate the moment at supports and hence draw the bending moment diagram and secondly draw the shear force diagram of a b and b c only not for the entire structure and using b calculate the vertical reaction at a and b and state their direction the thing that you can note here is that it has got different EI. It means that these members have got different rigidity. This indicates that the member CD is far stronger than member BC. We have point loads here and then we have UDL at between C and D. So we have to use moment distribution method. A moment distribution method consists of initial solution it consists of complementary solution in initial solution we find out the fixed end moment and in complementary solution we assume that all the joints are clamped then we release each joint uh, one by one to distribute the, the moments and carry them over and the way it works is that we unclamp a joint one at a time and there are four steps one step is that unclamp the joint and determine the unbalanced moment. The second step, apply equal and opposite moment. And third step is distribute this moment to connecting spans. And the fourth step is carry them over to the other joints. To set up the table, I will need stiffness, I will need distribution factors, and I will need fixed end moments. The formula for stiffness when the far end is fixed is 4EI over L. And when the far end is pinned, the formula is 3EI over L. Now I will find a stiffness for each joint, each internal joint. So joint B is connected with b a and b c so i will find i will use this formula for e i over l four comes from the formula e i for this beam this span is three e i so i will simply plug this value in here and length of beam a b is six so when you put these values you will get the stiffness b to a as two e i now remember that here far end is fixed. I have assumed that all of my joints are clamped. Okay, that's why I'm finding the stiffness. All my internal joints are clamped except the outer one. Certainly outer one, if it is pinned, it cannot take any moment. And then KBC, if I'm here at KBC, my far end is C and that C is clamped. So KBC is 4EI over L again. EI for BC is 2EI. So that's why I'm putting 2EI here. And length of this member is 4. That is the reason we have 4 over here. And then if you simplify that, you get KBC as 2EI as well. To set up the moment distribution table, I need stiffnesses, I need distribution factors, and I need the fixed end moments. Fixed end moments, they constitute my initial solution. The complementary solution has got four steps. So firstly, we clamp all the joints except the external ones, and then we find out the unbalanced moment. In the second step, we apply equal and opposite, and in the third step, we distribute it according to distribution factors. And the fourth step is that we carry it over and then put a line so that it is done and dusted. We don't come back to it. 
at each internal joint, you have to find out the stiffness. Joint B is connected with BC and BA members and joint C is connected with CB and CD. So first with CB, if I am at C, then B joint is clamped. So that's why it is 4EI over L. Or you could directly say that hey, I've already found out BC, CB is going to be the same. So 4EI over L, EI is 2EI for this span. And then if you put it, its value is same as value of KBC. And then I have CD. Here, you have to be careful because now joint D is far end. Far end is pinned now. So when the far end is pinned, then you have to use 3EI over L. Simply, instead of EI, you use 8EI and the length of the member is 8. This results in 3EI. So if the outer joint is a pin joint, then we use 3EI over L. If it is a fixed joint, then we use 4EI over L. Now, once we have done this, then we use distribution factors for span BA and BC. And then we go to member CB and CD. So whatever members are connected with these two joints, we will find out distribution factors for them. The formula for distribution factor is K of a particular member over summation of K. For BA, I have its K as 2EI and sum of stiffnesses which are entering into this joint. So I have K, BA and BC. So BA is 2EI, BC is 2EI. So that's where these values will come from. And then if you sum it up, it is going to be 0.5. The total distribution should be 1. If this is 0.5, for other member, it should be 0.5 as well, if there are two members connected. And then I move to joint C. Now joint C is connected with two members, C, B, and C, D. If I'm considering joint C, B, then I will put its stiffness in the numerator. And the stiffness for C, B is 2 E, I divided by all the stiffnesses which are entering into that joint. For C, so CB is 2 and CD is 3. So simply add that up. Now this is giving us 0 0.4. For CD, you have a stiffness as 3EI, which we've written here, and sum of all the members entering into that joint, which is CB and CD. When you simplify it, it becomes 0.6. Or you could say that for CB, it is 0.4. C to D, it should be 1 minus 0.4. Distribution factor for a joint has to sum up to 1, no matter how many members are connected. And then again, the AB is not going to distribute anything. It's going to be 0. Whatever moment it takes, it will take. And for AD, whatever fixed end moment we have, it is going to be transferred to the connecting span. And then I will find out the fixed end moments. So fixed end moments at the left is negative and the right is positive all the time. So this is minus PL over 8. If you have a central point load, if you put value of P here, P is 32, L is length is 6 divided by 8, it is giving you minus 24 kilonewton meter. MF, BC and CB, fixed end moment for middle portion, no loading is applied. That's the reason it is zero. And for the end span CD, you have MFCD is equal to minus MFDC. So one side negative, other side positive. Left hand side is always negative. The formula the fixed end moment is WL square over 12. And then you simply put value of W, which is 6. The span is 8 and square over 12. And this is giving us minus 32 on the left side. On the right side, it's going to be positive. Now we have to set up the joints first of all. So joints are four. In this case, we have four joints, A, B, C, D. So first set up the joints and then see which members are connected to these joints. Now with A, I just have one member, A, B. With B, I have B, A, and B, C. With C, I have C, B, and C, D. With D, I have D, C. And then I have to set up carryover factor. Now carryover factor for a fixed end support is going to be half, but it is only one direction. So it goes into the support, it doesn't get back in because we are not artificially clamping the joint. So for fixed support, carryover factor means that moment is going to be carried only in one direction towards joint A and then it can't be carried back. And between B and C, it can be carried back and forth. That's a two-way street. And from C to D, 
the moment cannot be carried. There is no carryover factor. The carryover factor when the far end is pinned is always zero. That is the reason we will not have any moment at all at D. So we will write those fixed end moments for AB is always negative. For BA, it is positive. The right side is positive, left side is negative. And that is creating the hogging moment. For BC and CB, no loading is there, so that's why it's zero. For CD and DC, you saw that minus 32 on the left and plus 32 on the right. Now this top portion is, is initial solution. And then the remaining is complementary solution. And the next step is distribution factor. Now you will write these distribution factors. BA is 0.5 and BC is 0 0.5, 0 0.4 for CB. It is 0 0.6 for CD. For pin support, it is 1. And for fixed, it is 0. I'm not sure how you got uh, MFAB. Yes. Why are you using this particular formula, PL over 8? These are a formula for fixed end moments. If we have UDL, then we use this formula, WL square over 8, negative on the left side and positive on the right side. If we have a central point load, then we have this formula, negative PL over 8. Starting from D, I'm assuming that this joint is going to be clamped, and then I'm unclamping this joint, then I'm multiplying it with the factor, which is 1, and then I'm bringing it over here. The first step was determine the unbalanced moment, which is 32. The second step was apply equal and opposite, which is minus 32. And the third step was distribute according to distribution factor. So minus 32 times one is minus 32. And the fourth step was to carry it over. So it can just be carried once to the span C, then nothing can be carried back. So that this moment becomes zero. So carry over is half, but it can just be carried to the other span only once. And we are getting negative 16 at joint C. Carry over is always half. Now, when I have carried this over here, I will move to joint C. I cannot directly move to B or A. I will have to balance moments over here, the one which is next to D. Now here, my unbalanced moments are I have to add up all those moments, even though here it's zero, but I have to add up all those moments. Zero minus 32 and then uh, 16. Now this will give me minus 48. Now I will unlock this joint and I will apply equal and opposite. What will be equal and opposite of minus 48? Plus 48. Plus 48, okay, but I will not write plus 48 here, all right? Yeah, yeah. I will just, Keep this thing in my mind. Equal and opposite is 48 times 0.6 will give me 28.8. 48 times 0.4 will give me 19.2. So this was my third step. Fourth step is to carry it over. And carry over factor is, remember my all joints are clamped. I have just unclamped joint C. It can't be carried back over to D. The reason is that it is a pin support, pin support at the end. So carryover factor for this 19.2 is half, half of 19.2 is 9.6. Now, once I have carried everything over, then it's very important to put this line. It means that now we don't have to do anything with that. So what, what is the number that you don't write in the table? If we write this 48 before distributing it, this 48 is for the entire joint. And how do I know that which span is taking how much moment? That's why we don't write it. That's why we're writing it here. The moment is taken according to this distribution factor, 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. Now, the key thing to remember here is to put this line. If you do not put this line, then everything is going to be messed up. Now, the reason for putting this line is that, okay, this is done and dusted. We have now clamped this joint again. And our next joint is joint B, where we have this unbalanced moment. So we have unbalanced moment of 9.6 plus 24. So find unbalanced, unbalanced moment is 33.6. Now apply these four steps, unlock this joint and determine unbalanced moment. Unbalanced moment is 33.6. Apply equal and opposite. 
minus 33.6 then distribute so we are writing this moment but we are writing it after distributing it so minus 33.6 multiplied by 0.5 is 16.8 you can carry it over to c and you can carry it over to a as well so half carryover factor is half when other joints are clamped now again i will unclamp joint c and then i will put a line here as well now i will move to joint c again where how much is unbalanced minus 8.4 minus 8.4 what is equal and opposite 8.4 8.4 if i multiply 8.4 with 0.4 what value will i get 5.04 my next step fourth step is to carry it over now it can't be carried back here because this is a pin support carry back over to c half of 3.36 which is 1.68 once i have carried it over then i have to put a line and then i will go away and unclamp joint b for joint b what is unbalanced moment 1.68 what will be equal and opposite minus 1.68 and how it's going to be distributed according to distribution factors which is half and half minus 1.68 divided by 2 you're getting minus 8.4 fourth step is carry it over so carry over factor is half and then again carry over factor is half over here now if i want it i can stop actually here and then i have done the next step which is unbalanced is minus 0.42 equal and opposite is 0.42 multiplying it with 0.4 and 6 0.168 and 0.42 times 0.6 is 0.252 and simply add everything up in in that column starting from the top this will give me minus 13.91 then for cb 13.91 then i will move to bc minus 32.82 so this is correct as well the key thing here is that at a joint the moment has to be equal and opposite at cb and cd this has to be equal and opposite if you're not getting equal and opposite it means you have made mistake and if you have negative on the left side of the span and positive on the right side it means that these are hogging moments so now next step is to plot these moments so for a i have 32 for b i have 6.36 for c i have 13.91 so because of that point load i will have some kind of sagging here it will come down in a straight line between b and c i have got no loading so that's why i will simply connect it in a straight line and between c and d i have udl so that's the reason it will come down it will have a positive sagging moment here now how do we work out this 48 which is value of moment here and this value these are simply supported moments so if you work out wl square over 8 or here pl over 4 you will get this 48 6.36 negative so now i have to find the shear forces and the quickest way for me to find shear force is to first of all find the simply supported shears and, and then find out shear based on moments simply supported shear is simply i had 32 kN between a and b 32 kN means it is divided half and half that is simply a supported shear and reason i have positive on one side and negative on the other side is that upward forces are positive leftward forces are positive and clockwise moments are positive downward forces are positive rightward forces are positive and anti clockwise moments are positive if you are taking the things from right uh, that is the reason on the left side i have uh, positive and on the right side i have negative so simply supported shear for c and d is going to be w l over 2 w is 6 and l is 8 and 2 3 times 8 is 24 if you want it although i mean we don't need it but if you want it you can plot the entire shear force diagram but we are required to find out shear force diagram for a b and b c the next step is to find out q which is based on moments q is the shear from hogging moments you will take the left side moment 32.8 you will take away right side moment which is 6.36 you will divide by a span which is 6 meter giving you 4.41 and that 4.41 is at both sides left and right if you wanted it for bc for bc it would be left side moment minus the right side moment divided by a span i think the span was 4 minus 1.9 for c and d again you will take left side moment 13.91 Take away right side moment, we have nothing on the right side, dividing it by 8, which is the span. 
will give you 1.74 it will give you 25.74 i will start from here so 20.4 and then between point a and the point load i have this 20.41 at point load the shear force is going to drop suddenly how will it drop it will drop by the force which is applied there force applied is 32 20.41 minus 32 will give me 11.6 and between this point and this point it has to be same because there is no load applied between point load and b the shear force diagram goes up at a value of minus 1.9 which is here and between b and c again no load is being applied so from 1.9 i will move up to 25.74 at point d i have negative 22.26 means negative will go down 22.26 between c and d i have udl so whenever you have udl this is going to be connected like this now the final part of my question is find the reactions the reaction at a is quite clear which is 12.41 and it is upwards the reaction at b is upwards as well it is going upwards so 11.6 minus this part of reaction will give me reaction at b and if i have to find out reaction at d then that will give me 22.26 kilonewton reaction at c will be this 1.9 plus 25.74 how do we know that the reactions that we are getting are fine or not so summation of vertical force is equal to zero i have downward means 80 kilonewton total load plus ra that is 20.41 plus rb that is 9.68 plus rc that is 27.64 plus rd that is 22.26 this is giving me zero so when i am getting summation of vertical forces equal to zero it means that i have worked it out properly thanks for watching this lecture today click on left side of the screen to watch another video relevant to this lecture click on right screen to watch full playlist on structural mechanics